Ah, Reddit. A place where 50% of the community is just trying to have some laughs and make some funny little memes. And the other 50 people are degenerates who believe that making a post is going to somehow change the world around them in this fantasy land that they live in. As you guys can see, I'm not exactly a big fan of Reddit, nor am I that knowledgeable on what presides or what happens in it. However, in this video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. One of my viewers on stream recommended that I go check out one of these subreddits in Reddit called slash R entitled parents. And it's a little bit of a different content than what I usually post on this channel, but if you guys like it, let me know. If you're a pissed off Redditor, learn to laugh. Here we go. Oh, okay. This one is a block of text. I'm going to go ahead and assume this was written by a woman. Um, but uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, the story of my emotionally manipulative mother. This is going to be either very good or this is also going to be another crock of shit. So I, I actually am kind of curious. What do you guys think? Let's see how long this is. Oh! Oh! Oh god, how many words is that? Microsoft Microsoft Word. How, how, how many words is this? That is 1,397 words. 1,397 words. Most of this started when I was young. Like really young. Around 5 years old. Towards the beginning, my mother and father owned a house. As soon as turn 4 my father was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. He later told me he waited until my 4th birthday, because he didn't know if he was gonna survive, and wanted to be with me for what was possibly my last birthday with him. Thankfully, he made through it, with a large scar around his neck that showed where his neck was sliced open, oh. scars almost ear to ear. Oh. When my father was recovering, stories he told me were incredible. Oh, dude. Yikes. Ouch. Okay. While my father was recovering, stories he told me were incredible. He built our fence while he was recovering, using one arm, which is incredible thinking that he could even stand while going through chemotherapy. But this yeah. is where the story begins. When my mother told my father that she couldn't handle his cancer and how it was a struggle for her to deal with him going through chemotherapy all the while she was manipulating him into thinking he was in the wrong, that he was emotionally abusive, with major anger issues. A bit later, from what I Let me comment on that part real quick. Okay. Look. That is a process, okay? Going through any form of like cancer treatment, especially chemotherapy, that's a process for anyone. And that's going to take a lot of time, adjusting, effort. There's going to be a lot of struggles. There's going to be a lot of anger. There's going to be a lot of pain. Is they're talking about how he was emotionally abusive, major anger issues? He probably was. Like, for feck's sakes, the man is having to come to terms with potentially losing his life. And on top of it, too, he literally had to get his throat slit. So, I'm, I, I'm actually, uh, so far, I'm, I'm impartial. I, I understand his suffering, and I understand the mother's suffering. That's, that, that's kind of how I'm seeing it so far. But let's continue. A bit later, from what I can remember... Me and my sister were playing with our toys in my room, and my father comes home. He calls me downstairs to watch a movie, while my sister stayed in my room and continued playing. Another thing to add, my mother was an addict when it came to gaming. As in it was common for her to forget to feed me and my sister dinner, all the while my father is working three jobs just to make ends meet. She was unemployed, and regularly stayed in or went out with family which we later discovered were multiple different guys she had on the side. But anywho, in sitting on the couch with my father, my mom stuck to her computer. Oh! 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 Damn, that took a turn real quick. Okay. 
So, her being an addict to gaming, whatever. We all have our vices. I mean, for feck's sakes, like, Kitty sometimes, like, Kitty never forgets to feed the kids while she's gaming. I I'm making a joke here for satire. I mean, Kitty forgets the kids, like, while she's playing Minecraft, you know? They just kind of disappear on her. Like, sometimes they get left at school. You know, just, just regular, just regular things that occasionally happen. But, like, that, that's not that big of a deal. That's still not child abuse. That's still not being, like, emotionally manipulative. That's just, meh. You wanted to play Minecraft instead of feed the little feckin' hungry mouths, you know? Eh, get over it. Now, the thing about her being unemployed, which is normal if uh, a man wants a stay-at-home wife, which uh, I, I am one of those men, I, I, I do prefer that. I would like to have a stay-at-home wife that has like some kind of like uh, side gig or whatever else. So to most men, th th I'm sorry, to a lot of men, they do want a stay-at-home wife. That that just that is how it is. The, whatever society wants to tell us nowadays about how gender norms and these biases, yeah, shut the hell up. It has been proven that successfully we've been the most successful when usually there's one partner working and one partner taking care of the household. So get over yourself. Um, now. The thing about her saying that she's going out with family and she was actually messing around with multiple different guys on the side. Ooh. Mmm. That is. That is a problem. That is a fat. Problem. That is a fat problem. He's out here working, providing this household, providing this environment for you, and doing everything else, and making sure that the bills are taken care of and that all ends are meeting. He's letting you have your gaming addiction, and you're over here going balls deep in your throat on some other dude's knob while he's out at work and saying that you're seeing family. Hmm. Yeah, we got a problem. But anywho, I'm sitting on the couch with my father, my mom's stuck to her computer, and my dad's a little annoyed. He looks at my mother, and says when are you gonna watch a movie with us? You've been sitting here all day. Which my mother promptly responded later, I'm busy. Which started an argument between the two of them. My mother saying she'd rather be playing her game, my father getting pissed off that she won't spend time with her kids. So my father promptly walked over to the computer, and pulled the power cord. She. Went. Ballistic. As she had every right to do, I do under- Listen, I have- I have forewarned Kitty. Like, I love Kitty, I really genuinely do. I have forewarned her so many times. If it's important, I will pause what I am doing, I will pay attention to you, we can talk about it, we can, like, discuss things. Do not ever unplug my games if I am in the middle of playing them. Ever. I will go ballistic myself. So that, that's relatable. I can understand that. He... He's probably pissed off because she's over here, like, going balls deep and sucking on some dudes while he's off at work, but, you know, I, I understand her going ballistic. So let's continue. She. Went. Ballistic. What ensued was utter chaos. Me running around the house with my father, all the while my mother was screaming at him to give her the power cable. My mother had body slammed my father into a wall in an attempt to rip the cord out of his hands. Which my father promptly <gasps> responded by grabbing her and shoving him off her. Yelling get the fuck off me. Then my mother promptly called the cops. I'm sitting in the- Wait, 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 back that up. So, so, we went from her pulling out the power quit cable to his feckin' shit, to her becoming, like you're saying, Turtle, a WWE wrestler, to her thinking that she's in the right to call the cops on him? What, she just body slammed him? Dude, she just committed domestic assault. 
She literally just committed domestic assault and she thinks, she thinks the cops are going to be on her side for what the feck she just did? Are you actually stupid? That is the dumbest shit you could do! I'm sitting in the corner of the room crying, while my mother is screaming about how he chased her all over the house, while beating her. All the while, I'm sitting in the- Hold on, wait, wait, wait. I'm sitting in the corner of my room crying while my mother is screaming about how he chased her all over the house while beating her. Okay, so she's lying. She's lying to the police. Okay. All the while, I'm sitting in the corner screaming dad didn't do it. He didn't hit her. Which they just ignored. They promptly took my father into cuffs, and had him stay with my grandfather. This is only one of the many situations, and when they finally divorced, my father wanted to buy her out so we could stay in our childhood home, which she refused. And through a loophole kept all the money for her and her mother there's a fuck ton of other stories, but I'll fast forward a little bit. My mo- That is a sad reality. Um, that is a very sad reality. Um, congratulations, if you have a dick, welcome to being a man. You can say you're non-binary, you can say uh, you identify as a woman all day long, uh, but I promise you that if you are ever in any kind of a squabble uh, with your significant other, and if they are a, uh, especially if it's a woman, and if they are a piece of shit, and they sit there and they want to lie about what you did you're you're gonna get handcuffed the sad thing is is that right now right now i'm telling you guys if kitty screamed bloody murder and called the police here right now and said that i had abused her even though i was out here streaming this entire time and i had no chance because obviously you guys have seen when I've been at the camera and when I haven't. Even if <clears throat> I have that, they are probably still going to arrest me, still take me to jail, and then potentially still press charges against me, and then I will still have to appear in court to show all this. And prove, no, I physically couldn't have done it, it would have been impossible, I started streaming at 5 o'clock, uh, you guys got called out here saying that I was abusing her at whatever time you got, like it couldn't have possibly happened, you can literally see the police uh, like coming to question me and arresting me on stream, and that's exactly what would happen. It's a very sad reality as a man, like, that's something, that, that's where you gotta be very careful about the woman. Uh, or I guess the partner in general, like whether you're gay or if you're, uh, um, or if you're straight, it doesn't matter. You, you gotta be very careful about the partner that you pick because the thing is, is that dude, you pick the wrong partner and they could completely feck you. Like it's, it, it, it's sad. That's, that's a sad, that's a sad thing to hear. I, I hate, I hate false accusations against men. I despise it. My mother starting getting serious with the guy we're gonna call Matthew. Ooh. Matthew was a big pothead, loved his weed. At one point when it was legalized he had 20 plants growing in all these tents. <laughs> this is around the time I was 10 years old. This was when it started getting really bad. My sister developed emotional issues due to the abuse my mother put her through. She was hot-headed, quick to violence, and even broke our stepfather's thumb when he smacked hands for saying she was gonna punch him. All the while she's 8 years old. <laughs> He's a grown-ass man. Around the time I got a therapist, this was when I was diagnosed with severe depression That's fair. and social That's anxiety. Fair. As well as ADHD. But my mother had it convinced in her that it was all my father's fault, and I slowly began to believe her. All the while I would start bawling when I couldn't see my father. Another few years ahead and I completely believed that my father was the spawn of the devil. Told him I didn't want to see him again, and I ghosted him for two years. My mother told me that you've been behaving much better since you stopped seeing your father, all that stuff. It wasn't until I entered grade 9 that I left her. Okay. That is absolutely fecked on her mother. Okay. 
That is disgusting to me. Here's the thing. I don't care how much of a piece of shit the other parent is. Let the children come to their own conclusions and their own ideal of why they like one parent more over the other. Do not tell them that it is all the other parent's fault or all this other shit. You cannot do that because the thing is, is that you are creating an environment that if the child does believe you and then they start questioning things later on, they will grow to hate you. Plus, the thing is, too, is that, I'm sorry, you have just as much guilt. It, it takes two to make a child, okay? It, it does. And, I'm sorry, you have just as much guilt in this situation and just as much against you in this situation as that child... Uh, I'm sorry, um... I, I apologize. You have just as much guilt as the other parent. Because you two were the ones that sat there and made the child. He chose to make it with you. You chose to make it with them. Uh, like, now you're stuck in this situation. Don't you ever sit there and say it's all the other parent's fault and things like that. Especially when they were ever involved or ever, like, actually, like, active in the child's life. Like, that is absolutely ludicrous to me. That's just insanity to me. That's, that's very disgusting, too. <clears throat> and then obviously the whole thing of like couldn't see my father that one's okay this one i'm gonna be honest it's a, it's a bit of a hit or miss the woman sounds crazy okay the, the mother genuinely sounds like she's feckin bad shit crazy i, I I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and throw that out there <clears throat> but the father still I, I don't know the whole story. Like, if the father was asking, like, hey, could I please see my kids? Could I please spend some time with them and things like that? Like, I don't mind picking them up. Like, doing whatever he had to to sit there and try to get them to spend time with them. And she was denying them. 100% all of the mother's fault. But if a father, just like some fathers do do, where they're just like, I don't want to deal with this crazy bitch. I hate that this happened to my kids. This fucking sucks. But I just, I got to let it go. I got to let it ride. And just kind of like, took himself out of the situation that's understandable like i i understand his side on that uh but like he is choosing not to see you like that that is the truth but obviously it doesn't sound like this uh this person who wrote this post necessarily has all the information so kind of hard to judge one way or another of where it's going so while on summer vacation from grade eight I slowly began to get into contact with my father again, which my mother obviously did not like. Okay. She was very clear about that. Then I came home one night with two bags of Reese's peanut and butter cups and a slushie. My mother immediately thought I was on drugs. <laughs> I told her that the only reason I had those Reese's was because they were on sale. Then the new guy she was dating came up and said that since he had two teenage sons before that he knew I was lying and told my mother not to believe me she lost it on me I broke down into tears and I told my father I was running away as soon as that's ironic that this new guy that she has is literally growing drugs that, like it, it, you can say it's legalized all day long okay Weed, alcohol, cigarettes, all that shit is still a drug. It changes and it alters you. That's the point of it. And I, I, I can't help but laugh that this dude is over here growing weed in his backyard in tents. And is sitting there and accusing her. And like the mother is totally fine with this and probably partaking in it. And is sitting there and accusing this child of doing feckin' drugs. The irony in that is hilarious. That is, that is some ironic shit. As soon as grade 9 began, I was already prepared. I had packed a small amount of stuff I needed, as well as took the battery out of my phone and I ran as soon as the bell rang. I ended up at my grandfather's apartment, waiting for my dad to come. When he did, he gave me the biggest hug I've ever had, and asked me if I really wanted this. Which I did. And I promptly called my mother, and told her I wasn't returning home, 
and I'm sick and tired of everything you did to me and my sister. Her first response was well. Look at the balls on you, big man. Which broke me off. <laughs> I told her I wasn't coming home, and she demanded my phone, the password to it, and all of my accounts. I told her that she didn't even buy the thing, but she still demanded it back with all of my files. My dad just told me to give it to her, and I said I would. But it would be wiped. That's the first time I actually stood up to her, and she was pissed. A bit later, I Very told good. her I wanted some of my things back, like a laptop, my gaming PC and my Game Boy. She told me I wasn't getting it back, which started a fight between us, in which I called her an emotionally abusive, stuck-up, bitch and the world's <laughs> worst mother. And when I massaged her a few weeks later, she had told me she sold it all. She sold all of my stuff. One terrible, terrible way to handle that with your child. That is a terrible way to handle that. When your child is literally telling you they're running away uh, because of like everything that's going on, and your response is, wow, look at the balls on you, big man. Terrible, terrible way to go about it. That is just absolutely horrid. And then... Like, when some of the, like, first of all, it sounds like she must have got it from a, a boyfriend named Matthew, uh, like, her phone and stuff like that, and then also, like, how she paid for, like, half of the PC farts and the Game Boy or whatever else, and then telling her that you sold it? Dude. Come on. You are, you are barking up a very very bad alley with that like that is absolutely horrid as a parent to do like that is that is how you literally show your child that you are a piece of shit and they will strive to never try to become anything like you like that's disgusting man <clears throat> so I, I, I we'll let this post finish out but i think i have my opinions on this she sold all of my stuff then she tried to guilt trip me into coming back because the dogs and your sister miss you and we still love you and never did anything wrong. Now I'm in grade 10 and doing absolutely great for myself. Living with my father has been the best decision of my life and I've been keeping contact with my mother to a minimum. But nowadays I try and show her at least a little respect when I see her. TLDR my mother turned me against my father, emotionally abused and manipulated me and my dad, convinced me to cut contact with him for two years, and when I realized what was happening, I left and moved in with my father. I gotta say, I gotta say, this one has a lot more merit to it. This one has a lot more merit to it it does this one actually makes sense it's understandable why the decisions that were made were made it's understandable why this person feels this way it's understandable that like their mom sounds honestly like a piece of shit um and it sounds like they've already realized that they're better off living with their dad and whatnot and more power to them i wish them i wish them the best of luck and i hope genuinely that this is uh that this situation is what it is and i i hope that they uh they're able to succeed at whatever it is that they're trying to do now but yeah this sounds like a pretty toxic relationship with their mother so you guys can see very different from my usual set of content but i want to try something new because i've always kind of been fascinated with the whole commentary community and whatnot if you guys have any suggestions, any criticisms, anything that maybe I could do to make the next video better, or if you have stories you'd like to recommend to me to go check out and potentially put in another video, please let me know. This is something I've kind of been interested in trying out on, and uh, I don't feel that a lot of people are doing this where they're actually like diving into Reddit themselves and uh, reading out the stories while giving their own commentary and opinion. They're usually doing like reactionary videos or whatever else, so cool. Well, hey, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate the absolute hell out of you. Uh, please uh, like the video, 
share it and subscribe if you enjoyed this and you have some other ideas of what I can do with more future content. If you didn't like this video, well, tough shit. YouTube doesn't give a shit. Ha! Enjoy that taken away dislike button. Mama Susan, you're killing us. Please, please, give us, give us back the like to dislike ratio. Hi. Peace. Amigos, talker.